Hey, so this video is going to be about uh, a justification of the Cartesian product based on the axioms of ZFC. So, uh, we're, again, we're talking about axiomatic set theory. So, first off, I just want to make a uh, correction for the video on the set theoretic definition of a function. So, I omitted uh, something uh, while defining the second condition for a function. So, we'll just cover that. Okay. So, f is a function mapping the domain A into the codomain B if and only if f is a binary relation on the Cartesian product of A cross B and 1 and 2 hold where 1 states that for all x in the domain there exists a y in the codomain such that x comma y is an element of f so essentially what the first condition says again is that every element of the domain is mapped to some element in the codomain. Now, just on notation, x comma y element of f, where f is a function, is written y equals f of x. So you'll probably have seen that notation in high school and it's used, you know, a lot. <laughs> so also it gives rise to the idea that uh, a function is a rule that transforms an input into an output which isn't a bad way of thinking about it but I think the set theoretic definition of ordered pairs is more general because there are many different ways of getting from y to f of x, sorry, or getting from x to y. So you could have many different equivalent ways of writing the same rule, so in some sense the rule isn't the function, it's the values that the function takes that is the function. Okay. So, this bit here is what I omitted accidentally from the video on the set theoretic definition of a function. So, again, condition 2 states that for all x in the domain, for all y1, y2 in the codomain, if x, y1 is an element of f and x, y2 is an element of f, then y1 and y2 are equal. So, in the previous video, uh, this is pretty obvious, but it's always good to state it explicitly. So I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Okay. Also, this, as we can see, is the only place in the whole definition where I've appealed to a concept which hasn't been defined set theoretically. So this brings up the question of what is equality? What does it actually mean? And it turns out that you can define it completely in terms of set theory, but generally speaking it's an assumed logical concept which is called, which satisfies what a, well it's an example of an equivalence relation. So I'll do a video on just equality and talk about that. Okay. So now into the main focus of this video. So this video is about how do we talk about or construct the Cartesian product of two previously constructed sets. So I'm going to give an axiomatic treatment of this and once that's complete it should be quite obvious how you can specify any function once you have the Cartesian product 
or any binary relation. So I'll go through that. Okay. So let A and B be any previously constructed sets. So given that A and B have been previously constructed, we can form the Cartesian product like this. So we apply We apply the axiom of union. So that states that we can always construct the union of two sets where the union of A and B is equal is equal to the set of all x such that x is an element of A or exclusive so inclusive or so yeah or x is an element of B so basically it means that you take all the elements of A all the elements of B and put them in one set and remove uh, any duplicates. So sets don't have duplicates. So the set A dot A, so A comma A is equal to the set A, just one copy of A. So here I've used disjunction, logical disjunction. So what that means is that either a, either the left disjunct is true or the right disjunct is true or they're both true. So if any of those conditions hold, this predicate is satisfied and otherwise it's not satisfied. So it's only not satisfied if both the left and the right disjunct are false. So not satisfied. Okay, so now we've got the union of A and B. So there's another axiom called the power set axiom. So the power set of any given set is the set of all subsets of that set. So the power set of A is equal to all x such that x is a subset of A. As I've said previously, A for all A, A is a subset of A, and the empty set is a subset of A. So, again, just to be clear, subset, so A is a subset of B means, if and only if, For all x, 
x element a implies x element b. Okay, cool. So every element of A is an element of B. So if we take the power set of the union of A and B, we get a new set which is the set of all x such that x the set of all x such that x is a subset of the union of a and b so let's think about what that would look like so say a and B are the natural numbers then the union of A and B will still be the natural numbers and the power set of the natural numbers will be any subset of natural numbers so for example A equal B equal the natural numbers then let's see. then 1, 2, the set containing 1 and 2 will be an element of the power set of the union of A and B. Because A and B are both the natural numbers and so X is either an element of the natural numbers or x is an element of the natural numbers, so x is an element of the natural numbers, or x is an element of the natural numbers. Hence, the power set will be the power set of the natural numbers, so every subset of the natural numbers will be an element of the power set. Believe it or not, we take the power set of this, <laughs> So we apply the power set twice in a row. So we've got a new set. So in the case where A and B are both the same set, the natural numbers, the power set of the natural numbers is the set of all subsets, and then the set of all subsets of the set of all subsets of the natural numbers would be something like, for example, 1, 2, and 1. So that's an example of an element of the power set of the power set of the union of A and B when A and B are both the natural numbers. So it turns out that It turns out 